Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Regina Jari. I'm a social entrepreneur, but I would have introduced myself as a rocket scientist. I'll tell you why I'm not introducing myself as that. When I was in high school, I loved science and technology, and I wanted to build a rocket. So I draw a prototype of the rocket, and I take it to my physics teacher. And he says, um, well, it's impossible. Girls don't build rockets, and I will end up in the kitchen. So I'm like, hmm, impossible. I just watched a man who had a rocket strapped on his back, and he was able to fly with it. So how is the teacher telling me that it's impossible? Anyways, I shelved my rocket idea, and then there's another thing that really disturbed me, which is the single story. So every time you think about Africa, you think about hunger, poverty, disease, war. Those are the images that quickly come to your mind when you hear Africa. There was a photographer who did um, a photo series, and he went around in, in a year to film children and their favorite toys all over the world. So these are some of the kids and their, the toys that they love to play with. Now, this is the picture of the kid from Africa. Now, I'm sure you could see before, he didn't obviously mean any harm by portraying those images. He captured what he saw. But once again, you have um, this African kid who looks very dirty with actually very clean looking toys. But you go back to that single story. So that's my rocket dream, which was shelved. My father brought home a computer, and I played Pac-Man, and I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my god, I want to build my own Pac-Man. How am I going to do this? And once again, I was told, girls don't go into technology. You know, girls don't build Pac-Man. So I said, I'm hearing a lot of don'ts, 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 OK? I was working after school. I went to Ashesi University, and I got a great liberal arts education. After school, the process that I had been trained was I go to school, I get a good job, I get married. And um, I, I had been working. I worked in a software company. I worked in a, one international bank. And when I worked in the international bank, I had to develop a lot of their e-banking applications. So I built the applications from scratch. I set up the whole department. And it was time for promotions. So I knew certainly everybody was giving me a pat on the back. Regina, you're going to get promoted. I was like, I know it. I know it. <laughs> so I walk into the room expecting my promotion. And then the man looks at me and he says, are you Regina? I'm like, yes. But you're a girl, and you're so young. I'm sorry. We can't give you the promotion. I was devastated. I had worked so hard for this. And in like five minutes, all the work I had done ended. I walked out of the office, and I quit the job. I went to another bank, doing well again in the bank. But then I started to think, is this it? Like all the ideas that I had, all my rocket ship ideas, my ideas to change Africa's single story. How was I doing that just sitting behind the PC at the bank? Um, I wasn't fulfilling what I felt was my true calling. And it was, it's really difficult to leave your comfort zone. I mean, imagine I worked in a bank, I got my bonus, 13th month, I mean, I got my salary. I had become accustomed to a certain way of life. I could afford fancy clothes, I had my car, I had rented a two-bedroom apartment, and I would get special commendations from my managing director in the form of letters and bonuses, so it was really difficult. The day that I resigned, I had no idea that I was going to resign, but it was like an alarm clock that kept going on in my head. You have to make a change, you have to make a change. So one day, I did. I just quit. And I decided to start a social enterprise called Strunko Solutions. And the first question I asked is, when I was in school, the educational system is based on root memorization. So there's a lot of chew, pass, and forget. And I had a personal experience whereby I was the first in, in my class. And when I say first, I'm not saying I'm the first because I thought I was the first. There was actually a league table, and I was number one. So I go on an exchange program, and I decide to do physics at Norway. And they give me the question, and they give me a formula book. And that's when I knew there was a problem. 
I could not apply any of the formulas in the book to solve the problem that I had. I was used to memorizing formulas and then giving out the answers. I was used to memorizing past questions and then coming out with the answers. So when I came back to Ghana, I would ask a lot of questions in class and then they would say, keep quiet, you know, you have to, we have to complete the syllabus, just chew, pass and forget. So I went back to that. And so I thought, how can I change this for other children? How can I create a better environment for young children like me who would want to build rockets? How can they be fostered and nurtured to start to think about Africa's problem? How can we build critical thinkers, problem solvers? Not people that just chew, pass, and forget, but can see a problem, identify the opportunities, and come up with a solution. So I decided to pilot it. We came up with these different programs that teach critical thinking and problem solving. In the pilot, we went to the rural areas, and we had different sessions with different children, because I wanted to get a sense of what the problem really was. And we had a lot of great sessions and got a lot of feedback with science and technology games. Now, in the class, there was a boy and a girl that came to one of our sessions in the rural area. And the boy told the girl, don't touch the computer. It's not for girls. And then the girl said, but I am a girl. So then I realized that she identified with me. So I thought, apart from just teaching these kids our science and tech games that we take to them and teaching them how to problem solve and critical think, we had the girl sitting back, taking more of a back stand. The boys were more aggressive. So I thought, how can I get the girls to also take part in creating technology, to have the female perspective? So we started Tech Needs Girls, which is a mentorship program. For young girls, if you say you can be an astronaut, you need to show them female astronauts. They're not just going to believe that they can be astronauts when they don't see that. If what they see in the communities are their mothers as traders, or their mothers as housewives, or other women that do small and medium scale businesses, that's what they are going to believe. So we had to expand their scope and show them other women that were doing technology. So with Tech Needs Girls, it's a mentorship program where we introduce young girls to other females who are either computer scientists or engineers, and we teach them how to code, how to build mobile applications, how to build websites, how to critical think. We have something that we call the Azonto algorithm, which is really fun. Maybe I'll show you. <laughs> we do a lot of data analysis. And that's what we did to gather all the data. So what we're doing is very systematic. So we gather data from our different girls. We look at the access to technology that they have. We break all that and the age group. So we work with girls between the ages of 6 to 19. We had been working, doing different workshops. And um, we were approached by a group in Nima. So there's a, um, there's a group of girls in Nima. And the group was started by a 12-year-old girl, Amina, who was being forced into early marriage at the age of 12. So at the age of 12, she ran away from home, and then she formed this wonderful club called the Achievers Book Club. The Achievers Book Club started with 60 girls and now has 250 girls from the slums in Nima, Mamobi, and Kotobadi. So when I met the Achievers, I was, first I fell in love with the girls, and I was so shocked that right here, in Nima, which is just in Accra, girls were being denied access to education, where when it came to education, it was always marriage of education. So I thought, we really have to empower these girls. So we started the Tech Needs Girls Club in Nima, and now we have coding classes every Saturday with the girls. The girls are building websites, designing mobile applications. It's just amazing. Now, as I'm talking, and as Paul spoke, I mean, it really resonated with me because we were asked to take our program to deaf children. And I'm very ignorant about the disability issue in Ghana. So I thought, hmm, I've been everywhere. I don't know a single deaf person. So how many deaf people are there really, you know? So I thought there may be like 100 deaf people. When I went to the State School of the Deaf, there were like literally hundreds of deaf children. And then I found out that there are over 200,000 deaf children. I was amazed. And the only thing that they aspired to be when we talked to the children was the girls wanted to be hairdressers and the boys wanted to be short short drivers. That was their highest aspiration. And I thought, they have all their limbs, they have all the critical thinking abilities. The only thing that they can't do is speak or hear. And that should not be a barrier. So we started to work on an application that converts text to sign language. 
we started off with a signing monkey. So when you type out something, it will, the monkey is an animator monkey that will teach you how to sign. So with this application, now the deaf can engage with the hearing and they can get the opportunity to aspire to great things. Now, when you are changing a story, it's very important that people hear what you're doing, that you know, they hear the good things that are coming out of Africa. Like if we keep hearing the negative, the negative, obviously the single story is going to perpetuate. We will keep hearing the negative. So we decided to use social media a lot to make a lot of noise about all the good things that were happening on, uh, in, in Ghana and to make a lot of noise about the change that we are bringing to hopefully empower other people to want to be a part of that change. So what we did is we reached out to the Google Reach program and had some people from Google come and work with us to help us develop a curricula. Now the curricula that we're developing is a science and technology curricula that we want to give to the government of Ghana and say, we don't think the way science and technology is being taught is good. We have this curricula that we've piloted, that we've designed, that we have case studies, we have a lot of data analysis. Take it and use it. So we want to scale what we are doing from just helping the girls in the slum, the children in the rural area, the deaf children, to all children in public schools in Ghana. <laughs> then, we will also be able to reach out with the help of Reach for Change to get the Crown Princess of Sweden to come all the way from Sweden to the slum in Nima. She came to meet the girls. That was her first point of stop. So right from the airport, the Crown Princess of Sweden came straight to Nima, even before she saw the president. So that was great to create a lot of awareness about our work. And then finally, we were on CNN. And I was on CNN talking about my story, talking about what I have done and all the things that we're doing, hoping to change the single story of Africa. I am just like everybody else in this room. I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. I thought, who are these people that do entrepreneurship? It's so risky. Every day I fight the fear, because the fear never goes away. You never know what's going to happen. But I get up and I do it despite the fear, despite the fact that I don't know, is my business going to collapse? Am I going to be able to make a change? But by interacting with the children, by working with small and medium scale businesses, that's how we make money. I'm able to see that we're making change in a small way every day by the work that we're doing. I'm hoping that I will leave a legacy where there are thousands of children, African children, that are using science and technology to change the continent, that are doing things in a different, enlightening and engaging way. So, my call to action to everybody in this room is, I'm just like you. I used my life savings and I had a dream. And I didn't let all the people that told me, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, stand in my way. I was able to climb all those hurdles and I was able to do something. What we are planning to do is set up a model village in Abetifi to pi pilot all the things that I've been telling you. Hopefully we'll get a lot of great children that come from that. So please, if there's any one of you in this room who has an idea, don't wait for anything. Just do it. Don't be scared. You know, I hope you can be motivated by my story to get up and do something. And hopefully we can be a doing generation. Thank you very much.